You just have to make it to air. Live from New York! So just as Saturday Night Live celebrates its 50th season on air, Jason Reitman's Saturday Night Movie was released nationwide on October 11th, a movie that gives you a glimpse into the first night on Saturday Night Live back in October of 1975. We're excited because there's never been a television show like this. Depicting some of Saturday Night Live's original stars. Dan, I uh, how the fuck do you pronounce this? Aykroyd. Yes, folks, the Dan Aykroyd, who took to his Twitter to show his support by saying, grabbing a crystal head cocktail at my local Cineplex VIP theater with friends to watch Saturday Night, the SNL movie, as the only original crew member who had a chance to read the script. I'm excited to see how Jason's hilarious yet suspenseful story turns out. Don't miss it. These can't be the right size. Yeah, you're right. They should be a little bit smaller. Now, after Dan watched the film, he tweeted out, cracking ahead to applaud Jason Reitman's triumph SNL film. Wow, what a propulsive, engaging, funny, beautifully casted and acted, suspenseful, adventurous, music-filled ride. <laughs> a perfect window into the creative process at its highest level. Pretty accurate, too. I was there that night and got to relive it wonderfully again. Congratulations, Gil, Jason, and Blummy. Don't miss it whether you know the show or not. It's a standalone masterpiece and a surefire candidate for best picture. Woo, Dan manifested this Oscar buzz, huh? So when Dan says Gil, he's referring to Gil Kennan, who is a co-producer on the film, alongside Jason Reitman, who also directed and produced the film. And when he says Blummy, he's referring to Jason Blumenfield, who also co-produced on this film. Now, Dan said this film was perfectly casted, so I assume he would also be referring to Dylan O'Brien, who ended up depicting Dan's character in the film. And I mean, this film does have a great and kind of random cast, and you can never get enough of Willem Dafoe. Your kids aren't ready for prime time. Who played the NBC head of talent, David Tibbet, who seems like a very shadowy figure, like somebody we don't know too much of, and there's really not much information about him online. But I have to admit, I am quite intrigued by this movie, seeing the score of 80 and 85% by the audience on the tomato meter. Who would have thought this little gem would be overshining Joker Folie a deux, which is sitting at a 33 and 32% on the tomato meter and the popcorn meter. Ugh. Now the film made an estimate of 3.4 million during the box office weekend, which honestly isn't that great, but it really goes to show that the hype of premieres is what it's all about. I mean, we're talking DC, we're talking Joker, very popular. That movie opening up with 37 million in the box office. So, I mean, juxtaposing those two, Joker definitely takes the prize, but buzz around a movie doesn't always mean long-term success. I think great acting, great writing, and great reviews will make this kind of a slow burner. The writers tied a belt around Big Bird's neck and hung him from my dressing room door. Hey, I heard about Big Bird. So sorry. Autoerotic asphyxiation. Who knew? Now, who knows if Dan Aykroyd is like fluffing up this film due to some of the connections he has. The producer, Jason Reitman, his father, Ivan Reitman, also worked really close with Dan on those Ghostbuster films. And son, Jason, directed and produced Ghostbusters Afterlife and Frozen Empire. So there's definitely some bias there. But I mean, regardless, I'm pretty intrigued. But let me know if you guys are going to see this film. And ta-ta for now.